Hello, welcome to Linux in the Shell, episode 9, the W command, and Linux load averages. Remember, this is just the examples uh, and a complement to the website, linuxintheshell.org. So if you have not read or listened to the audio for this episode, I strongly encourage you to do so now, because this is merely going to show some examples of the command's usage. And again, I want to thank Hacker Public Radio for hosting the website and the show. And without further ado, let's talk about the W command. The W command simply displays information about users currently on the machine and their processes. It also gives you a little bit of information about the machine. So let's just execute W by default. And you can see up at the top here is the header. And that just provides some basic information of the current time of the, sy uh, of the system. How long it's been up, in this case 5 days, 29 minutes, and there's two users currently logged in, and then load average, which we'll touch on in just a minute, load average up here. Note that this is by 1 minute, 5 minutes, and 15 minutes right there. Okay, so also in here, now you have the processes, or the users that are logged in and what they're running. So I have one user logged in here on terminal one tty1 logged in since wednesday the 20th of june it's been idle for four days it is a jcpu of 3.21 seconds now what jcpu means is that it's the time used by all processes attached by this tty so all the processes it's a cpu time utilized by all the processes attached to this so anything executed in here it might take some cpu time it's saying that it's a total of 3.21 3 minutes and 21 seconds being utilized uh, by these processors now this right here pcpu shows the amount of time used by the current process named in the what field and the what field right here is the x in it so that's my x session right there so currently it's not using any cpu processing power but over uh over the span of four days anything that was utilized by this process running or the same terminal used the processor for three minutes and 21 seconds second line shows the same thing my user logged in dan uh from a pts three and it's currently running the less command it's been running uh logged in on the on 1919 it's been running for 56 seconds the less command and it is has one second of processor usage by all the commands in here and, and nothing currently being used by the processor so it's, it's an adornment state so that's what it shows in a nutshell uh, here is on another machine. This is I'm um, logged in SSH remote into a, another desk uh, laptop desktop machine, and you can see that it's a little different. It's been up for one day. Uh, load average up here, a little more informative and some stuff. Uh, and you can see that I have a bunch of other things going on in here instead of just a, a single session. Uh, you can see how that looks a little differently, and then also then on a server. I have um, just two sessions, one that I've been logged in since Saturday the 23rd, been idle for 44 hours and 33, 4 minutes, and then another session here. That is my current session that I logged in today at 7.29, and it's been idle for uh, 0 seconds, so I'm actually on it right now. So if I do W, there's not a lot of load going on on these machines here that you can see, so that's some... So a little bit of information. So now there, there are a couple of options that you can pass to the W command. For instance, if I want to get rid of the header, I just type W dash H or no header. And that provides the same information as before without the header. just tells me the users and what their processes are and some information. Um, there's another one, which is the dash S or short. Oh dash s which shows the information in a short format it does it just shows where they're logged in how long they've been idle and what it ignores the jcpu and pcpu commands right there now chances are you are your w command is not compiled to just show by default where a user is logged in from but if you really wanted to see you can type w dash f and in this case you can see that i have one user logged in 
local machine because there's nothing there. And then one the user logged in from a remote machine, which is right there. So if I did W uh, F on another machine, you can see that these are all terminal or X-terminal sessions that are open here on the local machine. And then I've logged in from a remote machine here on that terminal. And then in here, you should see all remote sessions. Well, PTS. Oh, this obviously doesn't have the from option on here. Interesting. Oh, it shows it by default. So that's that's just... Uh, I should have paid more attention to that. Sorry about that. This is on a Slackware machine, and by default, it's compiled to show the from. So I'm on two different remote machines logged into this system. So when I execute dash F, it, it actually does the opposite. It toggles. The dash F toggles the from. So if it's off by default, it turns it on. If it's on by default, it turns it off. So that, my friends, in a nutshell is the usage of the w command. Now what is really what I wanted to do for this command is an easy way, uh, convenient way for me to just briefly talk about Linux load averages up here. Um, and what's important by that when we cover command like top command later on down the line. Uh, I don't have to get bogged down because top command has a lot of features to it. W is pretty straightforward, there's not much going that you need to know, but the load average is what's important. I have a full write-up of this on the website, but basically load average here shows the CPU load average for the past minute, past five minutes, and past 15 minutes. And what these averages are, um, as you can see, they, it's not really changing here, but if I were to go open up a new terminal window and there's not much I can really do at this moment to really tax the system. Maybe I can run an X screensaver. Uh, user lib X screensaver. If I might be able to do GL planet, that should bring happy GL planet. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm running something outside of, of X. But um, let's go back over here and see if that increased my load average a little bit. You can see that it went to 0 0.8. Um, really not taxing the system, but it's just to show you that because that's running, it's increasing the load average on my system. Now, load average, basically in a nutshell, is a percentage. You can look at it. This is uh, considered using 0.08% of my CPU processing power at the time. Um, one means that it's using all of the CPU, so all the processes on the system are utilizing 100% of the CPU. There's no processes waiting, so your system is working at 100% efficiency. Uh, generally, you don't want it to be like that. You want to have it under 0 0.70 is best. If, it, if you see it it's starting to rise up above 0 0.70, you want to be aware of what's going on, what you're doing. Anything above 1 means that there are processes having to wait for the CPU. And uh, if it starts to increase to like whole numbers like 2, 3, 4, uh, in a single CPU processing system, that means that a value of 1 or a 2 means that for what you're doing, you would require almost twice the CPU processing speed. A value of three would be three times and so on. Consider it like that's a rough estimate, but also be aware that in a multiprocessor or dual core system, uh, that value increases per processor. So if this is a, if I could just steal for top for a second, you can see it's a dual core system. So it has two CPUs. So what I'm looking for in in here is the value not to exceed two as opposed to one in a single core single processor system one dual core two quad four you know and so on so what this is saying right now is I'm barely touching the uh, barely scratching the surface of my CPU processing power but if it was at two that means I'm using my both my CPUs at a hundred percent um, there's no processes waiting, so it's running a, a running perfectly almost. Uh, but anything else that you try to run in addition to that will tax the system. Um, it's a nutshell explanation. Go over to the website, read the write-up about it, and um, also consult the links in there. Some really fantastic reading. So that's pretty much W in a nutshell. Uh, 
I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope to see you again in the future, and have a great day.